Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time it is where you are, but certainly we are glad that you joined us. It is September the 26th, lesson number four, celebrate in unity. Let's say that together. Celebrate in unity. It's based on Acts, the second chapter, 32 through 33, and then 37 through 47. So I hope you have been continuing to wash your hands, um, stay six feet apart, wear your mask, and you know what I like to say, just plain old staying away from folks. So lesson number four, let us pray, and then we're going to jump right into it. Thank you, Lord, for this day in which you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we're just thanking you for a wonderful, awesome, blessed day. God, we thank you for a day that's filled with your glory, filled with miracles, filled with signs, filled with wonder. God, we thank you that we are here to celebrate in unity, God. We are here to celebrate celebrate you. God, we just want to say thank you for all that you do, for your great works, for your awesome works, for your power, and for your glory. We thank you for this lesson. Teach us, speak to us, speak through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's it all about? Laura set the table as Mama tossed the salad. I'm excited that the Crosbys are coming for dinner. This will be fun, Laura said. Why are they coming? We never have company on school nights. Mr. and Mrs. Cro um, Crosby accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They really want to learn about living for the Lord, so we offered to disciple them. Tonight, Pastor and Mrs. Ritchie will join us too. Did you set the table for 10? We want the Crosby kids, you and Danny, to be at the table with us, Mama said. Just as Dad came from the patio with grilled chicken, the doorbell rang. Laura and Danny rushed to the door to welcome the Crosby family, along with Pastor and Mrs. Ritchie. Hey, Michael and Chantel, isn't this exciting? My mom said we'll be together each week for a while. How cool is that, Danny said. Okay, kids, to the table. You have time to play after eating. For now, you're a part of our study, said Dad as he pointed out where to sit. Pastor, will you lead us in prayer? Pastor Richie prayed, Dear Lord, you want to fill us spiritually with your word, just as his family aims to fill us physically by sharing their food. Thank you for your delicious food and close fellowship. Thank you for showing us through your word how to grow as a community. Amen. While mama passed dishes, pastor continued. We're here to, each, to enjoy each other's company and eat. But we almost also plan to do much more. Kids, when Mr. and Mrs. Crosby accepted Jesus Christ and joined our church, we agreed to help them grow spiritually. Laura and Danny, your parents offered to meet regularly with our new friends. You all will have what I call the three F's plus an S. Fellowship, food, fun, and Study. Tonight, we'll talk about the ordinances of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Your family made commitments to each other. These are exciting times. Why did the families meet for dinner? How are Laura and Danny's parents sharing the, miss the mission of the church? So, these families are meeting to be able to have fellowship and to teach the other family um, to become disciples. So 
All a disciple is, is a student of something. So a disciple in this case would be a student of the word or the student of baptism because they are talking about the ordinances of baptism. But most of all, they're disciples of God. Discipling is the number one thing that churches should do. If you are a Christian, that means we turn another person or help another person to learn, to understand, and to grow. That's all we're doing here. I'm helping you to learn, understand, and grow. And me studying this helps me to learn, understand, and grow. So learning from God. Jesus told the believers not to leave Jerusalem until the Father sent them the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts, the first and the second records what happened in Jerusalem church when they came together with the apostles. The Holy Spirit descended on the believers and they spoke in different tongues. People of all languages understood each other. Afterward, Peter preached to the crowd. He explained the gospel to those who listened. He urged them to make a decision. That day, 3,000 people were saved and baptized. They began living in a community of believers. Acts, the second chapter, 32nd through the 33rd verse, 37th through the 47th verse in the NIV version. God has raised this Jesus to life. And we are all witnesses of it, exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and he has poured out what you now see and hear. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, replied Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone performed by the apostles. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They, they sold property and possessions to give everyone who had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So we meet here in Acts and we're celebrating together. And this is not just a celebration. Um, it is a celebration because of the promise that was given before Jesus died, he said, peace I leave with you, peace I give to you. Jesus promised that once he left, that the helper, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit was going to come and walk with the disciples for the rest of the time. Here it is. Jesus has gone. He has died. He has risen and he has gone back to be with the father, but he made a promise 
that even though I'm not here with you physically, the Holy Spirit would be with them. So they went to the upper room and waited, waiting for God to answer his promise to them. And he did exactly what he said he was going to do. So the first thing is, is that when you're gathered to celebrate in unity, promises are fulfilled. That was the biggest promise that the children, that the disciples were waiting on. And that was the promise that the Holy Spirit was coming. So because the Holy Spirit fell into place, everybody was speaking in another language and not just any language. They were speaking in the language so that someone who was there that did not speak the language that they spoke, that they would understand them. Can you imagine all of those people all from different places and they understood the word of God in their own language? So because of that, the people were saved. They gave their lives over to the Lord. They repented and were baptized. So that's our second point. First, when you gather together in unity, you get the promises of God. Second thing, people were saved. When we gather together in unity, people repented and turned their lives over to God. So it says in verse 39, the promises for you and your children and for all who are far off for all whom the Lord our God will call with many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them save yourselves from this corrupt generation so unity caused them to receive the promise of God and also to receive salvation. The third thing is that because of what happened, people devoted their lives to God. When you come together in unity, the promises made, people get saved, people will then decide to devote their lives to God. When we come together and we fellowship one another, we can see and support one another and it will help others to devote their lives to God and to the teachings. And the last part of that was they devoted themselves to prayer. Prayer is just the vehicle that you need that helps anything that you're doing for and with God, it helps you get to where you need to go. Prayer is something you can use at any time, any place, at school, before you take your test, uh, in church, in the morning, in the night, before you eat. Prayer is just a conversation with God. It keeps you in close communion with God. So, and it said on verse um, 46, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They fellowshiped, they ate food. They ate together with glad and sincere heart, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily who were being saved. And that's our last point, praising God. So if you come together and the promises are filled, you get saved, you devote your life to the teachings of the Lord. And then on top of that, you pray. The fifth thing is to praise 
God. Verse 47 said, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That's what it's all about. Those are some great things that all of us can do. We can devote, we can gather together and receive the promises of God, call all the people around us who are not saved, they can get saved. We can all devote our lives to God and to prayer and then we can praise God together. That is the good news. So I hope that something that we said will help you. I hope some of these points or all of these points will be something that you adapt to your life and your lifestyle. Remember, we are not perfect. We are all striving to do better and to be better. So I hope that something that we have said today will help you do just that. I tell you, I am going to follow all of those steps. I'm going to gather praise and worship with you all pray. And I'm going to devote my life to the teachings of the disciples. Well, I hope you'll continue to wash your hands, wear your mask, Continue to stay six feet apart and just plain old staying away from folks. I hope you have a blessed day. Have an exciting day. It is so great to be with you again. I love you. See you soon and have a blessed evening.